Hey guys, John here from Stronger Runner and Canadian Running. I have the July-August issue here, and in this video today, we're gonna go over my latest article, the three by three by three dumbbell workout for runners. All right, so we know cardio is hardio, and if you're too tired from your running, you're not gonna wanna spend much time, if any, doing your strength training. But as we all know, strength training is super important at creating a body that is resilient, a body that is strong for running, and a body that has better running economy. All these things add up to your ability to string together several months of training without hopefully any injuries, and the ability to run with more efficiency, faster, and longer. But because cardio is hardio and running is exhausting, you don't want to spend an hour or an hour and a half doing a weight workout, which will then further make you tired for the run later in the day or the next day's workout. So that's why I wrote this article for the July-August issue. It's called 3x3x3, three by three by three, which means I've broken up exercises into an easy to follow routine. We have three workouts that you'll do once per week. So that's three workouts per week. There's three exercises per workout, yes, only three, and then you're only gonna do three sets per exercise. So that's why we have three by three by three. These workouts are fairly short, so hopefully you can get them done in 15 to 20 minutes, and you can do them wherever suits your schedule. You can do them after a morning run or after your evening run, or you could do them as a separate session in the day. Now we have a lot of exercises to get through here, so let's get started. So as I said, these exercises only require dumbbells, so that's why it's called a dumbbell workout. So all you need is a dumbbell pair. Depending on the exercise, you might want a heavier weight, or a lighter weight, or no weight at all. It's okay to do some of these exercises without weight because you will still reap the benefits if you're new to strength training. It's tough to make a recommendation on what weight to use, but a introduction weight for a male could be anywhere from 20 to 30, maybe 40 pounds, whereas a introduction weight for a female might be anywhere from 10 to 30 to 35 pounds. Just depends, again, on the exercise, how familiar you are with the exercises and your comfort in challenging yourself with a heavier weight. So the day one workout starts off with an alternating forward lunge. This exercise is great because it teaches your body to absorb impact. Stand with your feet hip width apart and hold a dumbbell in each hand at your sides. Take a large step forward, absorb that impact, and bring your rear knee towards the floor. Your front knee should roughly approach a 90 degree angle and your torso should be fairly upright. Push yourself back to return to the starting position and then take a step forward with your opposite leg. Alternate legs and do 12 to 15 repetitions per side. The next exercise in this routine is a single leg Romanian deadlift to bent over row. This exercise is great at targeting your glutes, hamstrings, mid and lower back, and your postural muscles your upper back. I'll also add these single leg exercises are great for challenging your single leg balance. Stand with your feet hip width apart with two dumbbells held in your hands at your sides. Stand on one leg, soften your knee, and lift your opposite leg in the air. Bow over with your back straight while lifting your rear leg in the air. Your body should form the shape of a capital letter T with your back flat and your leg extended behind you. While you maintain your balance, row the dumbbells up towards your ribs as you squeeze your shoulder blades towards each other and towards your hips. Return the weights to the starting position and then stand up to get ready for the next repetition. Alternate sides and do 12 to 15 repetitions per leg. And the last exercise in this routine is a shin box extension. This exercise is great because it promotes hip internal and external rotation. Sit on the floor with your knees bent and feet flat on the floor. Hold a dumbbell in each hand in front of your shoulders. Lower your knees to the right and bring your right foot to rest against the top of your left thigh. Keep your torso as vertical as possible. Next, extend your hips to lift your body onto the knees. Squeeze your left glute. Slowly lower your hips back to the ground and then rotate your knees to the same position but on the left side. Repeat this sequence and alternate sides and perform 12 reps per side. After this exercise, you can return to the alternating forward lunge and then complete three total sets. 
All right, day two's routine starts off with a single leg hamstring bridge. This exercise is great because it strengthens the hamstrings and the calves in the knee angle that is applicable to running. So that nice big knee angle. Lie on your back with your right forefoot placed on a dumbbell with your knee slightly bent. Bring your left knee towards your body and press your right foot into the elevated surface to lift your tucked hips two to three inches in the air. Feel a strong contraction in your hamstrings and calf. Hold this position for 30 seconds, lower your hips, and then switch sides. Do three repetitions per side, and then move on to the next exercise. The next exercise is one of my favorite core exercises called a dead bug, where you will reach one leg away while reaching a dumbbell overhead. Lie on your back with your hips and knees bent with your legs in the air while holding one dumbbell just above your chest. Tuck your hips in to flatten your lower back towards the floor. Exhale slowly and notice that your ribs depress as you exhale the air out of your lungs. Reach one leg away from your body while moving the dumbbell overhead. Notice the challenge to keep your back flat to the floor as you reach your leg and dumbbell away from the midline. Return the dumbbell over your chest and bring your knee back towards your body. Alternate sides and do 12 repetitions per side. After this exercise, you'll go to the third exercise, which is called a pelvic list. This exercise is great because it challenges single leg balance again, but it also challenges your hips ability to create and maintain a level pelvis. If you have hexagonal dumbbells, you can stand on the dumbbell carefully, or you can stand on an elevated surface that is roughly five inches off the ground. You may hang on to a railing for balance, keep your eyes on the horizon, and let your other leg that is hovering off the dumbbell drop below the surface of that elevated surface. Feel the pelvis drop out to the side and feel how your leg reaches towards the floor. Next, use your glute muscle to bring the leg back up to create a level pelvis. You should feel a contraction in that glute on that stance leg. Let your leg drop below the surface again and perform 20 repetitions. Do 20 repetitions on the opposite side and then return to the first exercise. You will then do three total rounds of this day two workout. And the last workout, day three, starts off with a step down. A step down is opposite to a step up where you will start on an elevated surface and then squat down as you reach your off leg towards the ground. Depending on your ability here, you might want to start off with a 12 inch box and then you could work yourself up to anywhere to a 20 inch box. To perform this exercise, stand on the edge of a very stable elevation with one leg. Let your other leg hang off to the side while you hold one dumbbell in both hands in front of your body. Sit back to squat down and reach your leg towards the ground. Try to touch the ground, depending on how high you're going, you might be able to touch the ground, with your heel while you reach the dumbbell in front of you so that it acts as a counterbalance. Press your leg into that elevated surface to return to the top position. Do 12 to 15 repetitions on this leg and then switch sides. After this exercise, you'll move on to the second exercise, which is a single arm offset weight farmer's carry with high knee march. This exercise is great because it challenges, again, single leg stability and core stability. Stand with your feet hip width apart and hold a moderately heavy dumbbell in one arm at your side. Bring your knee to your chest as high as you can so that your knee passes above your hips. Keep your toes pulled up towards your shin as you slowly march your way forward. Take very small steps, this does not have to be done fast, and always try to bring your knee above your hips. Keep your torso vertical, don't lean to the side, and don't bend over. Do 30 repetitions with the weight in your right arm, and then do 30 repetitions with the weight in your left. After finishing this exercise, you can go to the last exercise in this routine, which is a V-sit dumbbell rotation. This exercise is great because it challenges the oblique muscles important for that rotation that you should be able to control when you're running. Sit on the floor with your knees bent and feet just above the floor, hold a dumbbell in front of your body, and lean back until you can feel your abs engage to hold you in that V-sit position. If you feel more stable with your heels just touching the floor, leave them on the ground. If you want a little bit more of a challenge, you can lift your heels in the air. Bring the dumbbell rapidly from side to side as you rotate your shoulders from one side to the other. 
Keep your lower body fairly still and do 15 repetitions per side. After this set, you can return to the first exercise, the step down, and then complete three total sets. Whew, there you go guys, that's the workout, or the routine I should say, because there's three separate workouts. We went over nine exercises. I know that's a lot. You might wanna watch this video a couple times so that you can digest the cues and have the article at your side so that you can follow the photos along. I appreciate you guys watching this video and checking out my articles in Canadian Running. If this is your first time here, my name is John and I've been a personal trainer, a kinesiologist, and a strength and conditioning coach for over 15 years. I'm a regular contributor to Canadian Running in the Body Works section, and I write articles to make you a faster and stronger runner. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe, like the video, and share it with a fellow running friend because that really supports us and helps our channel grow. If you have any questions about the exercises in the article, please leave them in the comment section below. Happy running, guys. Run strong, and I'll see you in the next video. Hey, thanks for watching our video. If you want to get faster and stronger as an endurance athlete and a runner, you can check out our Strength Training for Running playlist here, and you can also see our latest training video here. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.